You're watching Talking Points, a focus on the political scene in Lubbock and across the South Plains. Welcome back. Here's a look at some more of the political headlines. You know, the hot gossip had been about Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick considering a primary run against U.S. Senator John Cornyn in 2020, but Patrick said no and then made it official with a public endorsement of Cornyn, who's running for a fourth term in D.C. And the city of Lubbock taking applications for several of its citizens' boards and committees now. Terms start June 1st. Things like the Animal Advisory Board and the Parks and Rec Board. Buy online, mylubbock.us, until January 18th. I dare you say that Lubbock City leaders have worked harder than most to make sure that we always have enough water. Still a serious issue, and no one knows that more than our farmers, who often have to try to grow things in the dust. The Obama administration had tried to regulate the protection of major waterways and tributaries, but most seem to think they went too far, calling dugout drainage ditches a protected waterway. The new Environmental Protection Agency is working to ease those regulations, but even that doesn't make things easier for local water authorities who try to put together long-term water plans. Lubbock has done a good job with this, and that was on display at a public meeting over at the Science Spectrum, and KMAX Tory Larned was there. We're anticipating that we may need some additional water supplies to, to help with our growth by about 2032. A growing city means Lubbock Water Department needs to be thinking ahead, and they are with their strategic water supply plan. What we do have is uh, some planning tools that help us to project into the future what our demand might be and what our supplies should look like. Aubrey Spear with the Water Department says they already have many diverse sources of water to battle the changing climate. Diversification of our water supplies helps us mitigate you know, against any deficiencies or any uh, shortcomings, not from the city standpoint, but just from the climate that we live in, where we have a variability from year to year, from decade to decade. People who attended Tuesday's meeting say they wonder if the community was doing enough to conserve. The water department quick to ease those concerns. And we have reached those goals that they've set forth for our water, and so that gives me uh, comfort in knowing that we'll have plenty of water because of our conservation. The the city has 17 projects ready to go to make sure there will be plenty of water 100 years from now. But these projects are expensive. Right now, the water department is paying off about $400 million in current debt. So to keep your bills low, Spear says all you have to do is save water. As we conserve more as a city, we push back these expensive projects so that we can pay off the debt on current projects and, and we won't have to raise the rates as much. Tori Larned, KMAC News. Thank you. Let's spend five good minutes with our right jolly old elf, Jay Leeson, host of The Other Side of Texas, and now a regular columnist with the Lubbock AJ and dresses the part too. Man, it's good to see you. I brought gifts. You brought props, what do you and that's what I always about? like. Let's look back on the year 2018, top political stories of the past year, starting with a local story with the biggest impact. Let's go local, and I'm going to bring gifts. Mm hmm. Bob Duncan. Bob Duncan. Bob Duncan's ouster from Texas Tech University has to be the biggest local story, if not the biggest alumni story at Tech. But uh, for Duncan, I have never, and I haven't been covering this very long. Mm -hmm. uh, you would be more authoritative than I am on this, but something that is uh, as bipartisan as Bob Duncan getting ousted at Texas Tech, the outrage and how it crescendoed, whether you're like, voting for Cesar Chavez, you're voting for David Koresh, or somewhere in the <laughs> middle. Uh, there was absolute public outrage yeah. in how that unfolds, and it's still an ongoing story. Be covering it in the AJ next week. Uh, AJ and the Amarillo Globe no News about uh, the governor's got a problem, and it's a Rick Francis problem. Does he reappoint him? Because here's what he can do. He cannot reappoint him and not name anybody to succeed him, and guess what Francis does? He holds over two more years until the next legislature. Without anything specific out in public. Hey, and this is a place where people do not like to be sneaky, mm -hmm. and that would be a pretty sneaky move. And uh, the Duncan Ire. Now, I don't even know if the vet school's about. Are we talking about the policy at this point? Uh, you just had Charles Perry saying you've got a he, chancellor. He didn't say his name. I will. John, John Sharp, Sharp. Yeah. running the state out of the A&M chancellor suite, but <clears throat> the question has to be, Greg Abbott got reelected by virtue of votes up here. Mm -hmm. Is he gonna take the money 
in El Paso where he didn't get the votes, or is he going to take the votes? Because he's got another election not too far away. Well, let's talk biggest state story here. Big state. We state got? story, Beto. Beto O'Rourke. Dun, dun, dun. We're not done with that one yet. Well, no. it may be a national story yeah. before it's all over. Beto O'Rourke changed the Texas legislature. He changed the House to be 12 more seats in the House mm -hmm. so that Democrats have a louder voice, a bigger voice, and you got to go get 12 more votes than you used to have to get. And it's all thanks to this guy right here. Now, he also changed the appellate courts. There, there still is, but it's recedingly less, uh, an opposition party in Texas. It, two years ago, I would have said it's the federal courts. Now you might actually have the semblance of an opposition party, and that is all due to Beto O'Rourke and what he's done with state politics. And that fundraising machine is going to continue. What about around the region? Number one story around the region here. Well, I got two gifts for you. Okay. These two guys, Conway mm -hmm. and Arrington. You got to get used to that backwards thing on the screen. Conway <laughs> and Arrington, in back early this year that they got cotton back under Title I, was the biggest story so far as economics in the region is mm -hmm. concerned. And I say this, and I'll say it over again, within Lubbock, a hundred mile radius of the hub city, the rural metropolis, cotton is a five billion dollars a year annual economic impact. And under Title I, greater protection, less growing sunflowers or whatever guys were resorting to right. without coverage, and they got it back in. And there's no and it's a big story because there's no way without the work of Conaway and his lieutenants like Arrington that we'd have gotten cotton in at the end of the year because it wouldn't have been budget neutral. Mm -hmm. They were able to do it at that time. Save the day for sure for a lot of people. All right, let's look into the, into the crystal ball now, looking ahead to 2019. Will West Texas uh, and their political contingent in Austin bring Texas Tech the political clout necessary with Bob Duncan in an ancillary role this time to get Tech's agenda through this next legislature? I think you've got to look at the Speaker of the House. Because it was, make no mistake, but now listen, you guys who believe the hype that Joe Strauss was an evil, no good boogeyman, you got to understand the background of how that money got appropriated last time. And I don't mean to short anybody here. Charles Perry did work in the Senate. Kel Seliger with him in the Senate. Uh, you had Drew Darby down in San Angelo, for Price, John Smithy in Amarillo, Frulo locally. Uh, cutting deals with appropriation chair, this, that, and the other to get it where it was. But it was Strauss who's the driver. And will the new Speaker of the House be in a position to not just let the members vote, but in a position to drive that particular issue? And that remains to be seen. And Dennis Bonin, though, to his credit, when he was here, always uh, is invoking the name of Pete Laney as a role model for creating a more inclusive atmosphere, at sure. least on that side of things. Or do, are we in a political situation, though, where he can get that done? I, I am not in the chancellor's, the systems office at Texas Tech is going to cringe whenever they see this. I am not optimistic about the vet school. I, I, and that's not to say I'm pessimistic, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm on the fence because that thing can die a hundred deaths before it gets there. And Sharp, as Perry just alluded to, is making this a hill to die on. And I've heard that from tech officials as well. And I don't know why. Yeah. He has such a storied career. It would be like you refusing to go on a nightly broadcast because you don't like the color of your tie. And people would say, Brian Mudd, you've been doing this for so long. Why, hey, why this particular issue? I might go on if my, hair, I might, if my hair is out of place, though. I, I might have to pull out. Okay. Okay. Well, you got to be petty in your own way. But this is super petty by Sharp, and there are a lot of maroon ties down yep. there. Jay Leeson, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. He's about to be everywhere jingle, jingle. all over, I'm telling you. you got to keep watching for this guy. We'll try to get him back <laughs> once in a while, but who knows. Coming up. Heads on sticks, more off. Yeah, we need more props. Months and months of work. Farm bill's been delivered. We talked about it, but now all they need to be able to do is sell what they produce. A look at the next problem next on Talking Points.